Hey guys, today we're going to be talking a little bit about vectors. Um, they're a really important concept in physics, so I'm going to make a video about them. There's not going to be a lot of physics in this video, it's mostly a math one. Um, so the basics of vectors is that I have a magnitude and a direction. So I'm just going to call this vector A. It's got an X component and a Y component. So there's the X, there's the Y. I'm going to name this the X and the Y axis. So mathematically, you write these like this. A is equal to angle bracket X. And then Y. It's got this little arrow on the top. Shows that it's a vector. Um, the magnitude, the length of the vector, So the magnitude is just the length of the vector. Um, the x component, well, let's have an angle here called theta. The x component is going to be the magnitude times cosine of the angle. And the y component is going to be a magnitude times the sine of the angle. If you have x and y, you can find the magnitude to be x squared plus y squared square rooted. That just comes from Pythagorean's theorem to find the hypotenuse. Um, this is also written like this, a vector. And you have those little absolute value bars. So vectors have these things called unit vectors, and unit vectors, you write them like this, they have a little hat on them, and they're equal to the vector divided by its magnitude. So unit vectors have a length equal to 1, so the magnitude of this vector is going to be equal to 1, and it's in the same direction as A, so it's also going to be pointing in this direction. It's just going to be a little shorter. So you can do some fun operations with vectors. Operations. Like addition. So I'm just going to define a vector A to be equal to a1, comma A2, and then a vector B. I'm going to call this U1, comma B2. There we go. And so if I want to add A and B together, A vector and B get vector, you get another vector, and that's going to be A1 plus B1 comma b1 plus b2. If you wanted to do subtraction, subtraction, you'd have a minus b. That's going to be equal to a1 minus b1, comma b1, oh, whoopsies. A1, A2, minus B2. There we go. Oh, I messed up here. A1, no, A2. There we go. I'm getting a little confused today. Okay, so you can also do um, constant multiplication. So if you had some constant C, times a, so c could be anything, uh, any number, I mean, c could be 1, 2, pi, etc. And this will be equal to c a1, comma, c a2. So all you're doing is distributing the c into the vector a. 
So those are the basics. Um, we're not going to need this anymore. So on a graph, if you wanted to represent addition, you could draw them like this. Let's see, you had vector and a vector, A and B. Then A plus B is going to look something like this. It's going to be longer than the both of them. It's going to be somewhere in between. And subtraction, you can think of it like this, where you have the vectors A and B. And you could think of it as a vector spanning the space in between the tips of the two vectors there. Now, it got to remember that this is for a minus b. If it was b minus a, the other way around, this would be pointing the other way, like this. An easy way to remember that is to think of this first term here, b minus a. This first term is where the, the tip of the arrow starts, and the second term is where the tail is. Okie dokie. Now we can get on to some interesting vector properties. Like, for example, dot products. Dot products. Products. So we write it like this, a dot b, and dot products give you scalars, meaning that they don't give you vectors, they give you numbers. So the dot product of a dot b will look like this, a1 b1 plus a2 b2. So you multiply the x component, multiply the y component together for each of these vectors, and add them up, and that gives you a number. So you can do some cool things with dot products. Like for example, you can use this theorem. A vector dot B vector is going to be equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle in between them. So if you have two vectors, A and B, then they have an angle in between them. And you can find it using this formula, just by solving for theta. And when you solve for theta, you get this. Uh, cosine, arc cosine, the inverse of the cosine. Uh, a dot b divided by a b. There you go. And so this is a number divided by a number. I'm taking the arc cosine, and that'll give you the angle theta in between these two vectors. Okay, okay. So, moving on from 2D vectors, we can go into 3D vectors. Oh, oh, oh. one other thing about um, dot products is that if you took a dot b equal to zero, what this tells you is that, whoopsies, I'll get that later. Okay, what this tells you is that a and b are orthogonal, which um, is just a fancy way of saying they're, they're 90 degrees from each other. Okay. That's just a side note. So for 3D vectors, they're a lot like 2D vectors. So this is going to be a little tricky to draw. OK. Like this. So 
I'm just going to label this x, y, and z. We've added another dimension. So these three-dimensional vectors have an angle, just like your normal ones, but they also have another one here between uh, the z-axis and the, the vector. So for example, let's call this a. Then a is represented like this, x, y, z. And you can find the magnitude of a to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Um, x is going to be equal to the magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle. y is going to be, well, cosine of theta. There are two angles here. Sine of theta. And then z is going to be equal to the magnitude of cosine of phi, where phi is the angle between this vector and the z-axis. OK. So operations. Addition. Addition with uh, 3D vectors is pretty much exactly like it is with 2D. So A plus B. Here, I'm just going to add a term here, A3. I'm going to do the same thing with B. Oopsies. B3. So just going to add these two together, and it's going to be a1 plus b1, comma, a2 plus b2, comma, a3 plus b3. And that's what addition is like, subtraction. a minus b is equal to a1 minus b1, a2 minus b2, and a3 minus b3. OK. And the same exact thing for constant, oops, constant multiplication, where c times a is equal to ca1 comma CA2, comma CA3. So once again, we're just distributing the C to each of the terms inside. The dot product for 3D vectors. Dot product. OK. So once again, B dot B is equal to A1, B1, plus A2, B2, plus A3, B3. So you're just multiplying each of the, uh, the components, x, y, and z together, the x components, the y components, and the z components, and that'll give you a number. It gives you a number every time. It doesn't give you a vector. So that's a lot like the 2D vectors. Now for the cross product. So the cross product, ooh, two S's. The cross product is super cool because um, it only works for 3D vectors. Well, you could, I think you could do them with higher order vectors, but don't quote me on that. Anyways. Um, A cross B is defined as the determinant of this matrix. So I'm going to represent this like a matrix because I think that's like the easiest way to visualize it. So you have your x hat, your y hat, and your z hat. So remember that these are unit vectors. 
So what these represent is the unit vectors for the x, y, and z axes. So they have little vectors going along the axes of length 1. These are also written as i hat, j hat, and k hat. Oof. Me. OK. So um, most of the time, they're written as i, j, k. So preferably use those. So what you write in the columns is the x components, the a1, b1, a2, b2, and a3, b3. All right, so what this is equal to is a2, b3 minus a3, b2, comma, a3, b1 minus a1, b3, a1, b2, minus a2, b1. Uh, OK, so this sucks to memorize. So I'm going to teach you a little cute trick. Oh, as you might have noticed there, cross products give you vectors. So they give you a vector every time when you perform the operation. Okie dokie. So what I'm going to do for my little trick, like a magic trick, um, I'm going to write these the first two columns again here, just for reference. B1, y hat, a2, b2. And I'm going to draw a little arrow pointing to here like a little L, and say that this times this is going to be the x component. So this is going to get us the, the same thing as the formula, but it's a little bit easier to memorize. So, so it's this times this minus this times this. So a2 times b3 minus a3 minus b2. Oh, times v2, sorry. That's the x component. The y component, draw another little l, is going to be this times this. So a3, b1, minus a1, b3, comma. And that's going to be your y component. And then I'm going to draw another arrow for the z component. It's going to be this times this, minus this times that. So a1, b2, minus a2, b1. And there you go. You got the formula, and it's a little bit easier to memorize if you draw it like that. OK, guys. Um, so that's all I'm going to do on vectors today. I didn't get to cover everything about vectors, because there's a lot. But hopefully this will help. So bye.